and you know the first term, then you can go ahead and figure this stuff out. So to find the first for a sub n, do we know what a sub 1 is? Yes. Yeah, so let's plug that in. 7. Plus, do we know what n is in for the formula? No, no, no. For this formula? No. n minus 1 times d, which is 12. So now I go and simplify that to 7 plus 12n minus 12, which equals a final formula of 12n minus 5. So that is your a sub n. Because if I ask you to find a sub 16, a sub n, I want you guys to be able to understand that you can apply now that formula to everything. So now, when I have a sub 16, I use 12n minus 5. Well, to evaluate for a sub 16, I'm just going to plug in 12 times 16 minus 5, which ends up being, what is it? 187. Yes? I am going to be asking you for the formula. So you need to know how to write the formula and also how to evaluate it. Basically. This. Because what I'm asking you to do is find the formula for any value of a sub n, and I want it simplified. <coughs> Can you guys please not talk when I'm going through this? Because this is exactly what you need to be looking at right now. So a sub n is equal to 12n minus 5. You guys remember when we were going over this last, last, last class period? We were finding the rules. You're not going to write this whole thing as your rule, right? This is your simplified rule. So when I'm asking you to identify a sub n, that's what I'm going to want you to do is have it simplified into that format. Because yes, then I can easily go ahead and find a sub 16, a sub um, 19, a sub 99. So what I'm asking you is to find the rule. Finding the rule would be the plug-in. Yeah, the rule is for any n. That's why we have n still as your variable. And then when you have the n, you plug it in, like which we've already did in our first day of sequences. We talked about how to evaluate, right? If you guys remember, our first day that we talked about this, we evaluated.